Let's flip the uh, line of scrimmage and name me five players on defense you're interested in following their development and why. So, Mark, who are the five guys on defense you want to follow here in spring? Uh, I'm just going to start off with a couple of guys who've been around. Um, Corey Foreman. I, I, look, make or break year. He, he has got to take that position in the spring. Otherwise, I don't think it's ever going to be his position. Uh, I know he's working really hard. He's he's humbled himself. He, he's doing what he can. We'll see if uh, we'll see if he's the right fit for that job for that for that spot. Uh, Damani Jackson. Uh, Scott mentioned the other day on WRSC that he was primed to be the starting cornerback last last season before uh, he had an injury setback. So if that's the case and he's helping now, man, um, USC is going to have. They're going to have a, a real an intriguing pro- prospect there because you don't get those types of uh, what, 6'2", 200 pound, fly like the wind type of cornerbacks. Those don't come around very often. And he's a physical guy. So um, really interested to see, watch him develop at corner. Zion Branch, is he going to be the strong safety? Uh, that We know USC has tackling issues. If he can just show up and tackle, it's I, the competition there's going to be fun to watch. And then the other guys I had were uh, Mason Cobb and Kion Bars. Cobb, I, USC needs tacklers. He had less than 100 or last year, just under 100 at Oklahoma State. Let's see him get 101 at USC this year. And then Kion Bars, look, you need somebody in that middle. It's uh, It's been a problem spot. And if these guys aren't the solution, then it's got to be the scheme. You can, they've upgraded. There's no, I don't think there's any question about it. Eric, who's your five? Yeah, so I went with, I went with uh, just returners again for this one. Zion Branch is, is on my five. I think the, the USC safety position just it, – it sort of fell apart as the year went along. I, I think you like what you have in Kalen Bullock. He is one of the best cover safeties in the country – tackling has been an issue you need someone who can clean up he needs to kind of get more consistent there more physical he's a guy that kind of owns when he makes mistakes and and has talked about that as well I I expect big things from him but that other spot sort of rotated a little bit Max Williams started there Bryson Shaw sort of filled in I think Zion is a big time tackler and extremely smart will understand where to be and and all of that I think that he's a guy who would have seen the field as a true freshman, not saying he would have started, but I think he would have helped out uh, had he not suffered that injury right at the very beginning of, of summer workouts. Uh, Romello height for me, Mark went with Corey Foreman at that rush end spot. I'm going to go with Romello. It was, it was Romello's position. He came in last spring, took it over. He was going to be the starter, had that sort of arm shoulder setback in the fall. And I don't think USC fans ever really got a chance to see what he could do. Uh, he was injured going into the season, got ejected for targeting that first half against Rice, and then got hurt against Stanford, was out for the year just like that. It was it felt like a handful of plays. Um, so again, want to see if he can sort of pick up where he left off when he got hurt last year and maybe get at that rush end spot. And that, that's a position that USC seems to have upgraded at too. So there's going to be a, a fight there for him. Uh, right in the middle, Eric Gentry. I'm curious what his body looks like after a year at USC. This will be his, his third year um, in college, how he develops and, and how USC uses him. Is he still that middle linebacker? I know the USC coaches love to use him kind of in the in the passing lanes to, to kind of be a problem for quarterbacks, which he is. Caleb Williams talks about that a bunch, that he is he's a problem to throw against uh, in practices. But as is going to be the case, I think, until we actually see them in a game, the question is going to be tackling. What, what happens there with him and, and really that entire position? Uh, Devin Tompkins, for me, he's a guy on that defensive line where I remember seeing him the first day at practice, and it was like, there's something there, right? He's a guy who did not play a ton of football. He's a basketball player, a big-time athlete, and you see the body, just kind of the, the lower half and how he is growing and maturing and the way he moves. And there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot to like when you look at him. And so how does the football come for him and can he be 
a big addition to that defensive line. Again, another position where there's a lot of guys coming in as transfers that you think if you're going to make a move, you, you better start making a move right now. Uh, and then the, the fifth guy that I have is Jacoby Covington. Mark mentioned Damani at corner. Jacoby Covington, I thought it was pretty interesting last year when Alex Grinch, he, he was pretty up front. Hey, we expected more from this guy, you know, paraphrasing. They thought he'd come in and, and make a real impact uh, at corner. And it, it took a bit. It took a bit. He eventually did grab a starting corner spot. I think kind of the off season and how he grows into that and, and takes advantage because everybody saw what Makai Blackman did to the room last year coming in as a transfer and saying, this is, this is my job and I'm going to be a leader here. People can kind of shoot for that. I think Covington is a guy to watch there at, at corner um, this spring. Cause they, they need guys to step up there as well. I mean, it, you can say, you can say that about every spot uh, on defense, but yeah, th those are my five. Chris, who's your quintet? Uh, I'm going to start with Damani Jackson also um, for the reasons talked about it, it's it's rare to find a guy with those physical attributes with the height the long arms a 10 200 guy I mean and good hips you're not going to find a more talented corner anywhere I'm not sure you're going to find a more talented corner back in the NFL I mean his skills are off the charts and USC badly needs somebody who can step in and be a shutdown corner. Um, so I, I want to see whether he can do that. Uh, Tyrone Tolini, this is a guy who I don't think anybody expected anything from last year. Hadn't played much football, didn't do anything at K-State. I think K-State was happy to buy him a bus ticket and get him out of the program. I don't think anybody thought he had anything. And he actually, as the year went on, started to perform pretty well. And this is a guy who I think can make a big jump because of because of how little football he's played. I think if uh, if he gets a little bigger, a little stronger, he he can he can work on his technique because I don't think he had a ton of that. Uh, this is a guy who really might make a difference at a position of need. So I'm excited to see it. Uh, I'm with uh, Eric on Romello height. Um, this is the guy that was supposed to provide a pass rush and he got hurt. And, uh, and once he got hurt, their only option for a pass rush was to take big defensive tackles and stick them out there, which is not good. So I, I'm hopeful we'll see something from him. Uh, Garrison Madden, uh, a guy with, I mean, unbelievable speed for a linebacker. I mean, this is a guy who runs like a corner. Uh, is he going to be big enough? Is he physical enough? Is he good enough? I don't know, but it's intriguing when you have a guy who's that fast to see what he can, what he can do. Uh, and my fifth one is Kalen Bullock, who is a great player who needs to be greater. Um, this is a guy who has unbelievable range, but he played safety too often as if he were Deion Sanders, that the only thing that matters is how he's going to cover people, and he's not really that interested in tackling people. And maybe that's unfair. Maybe, maybe Kalen, if he hears this, which he probably doesn't. Uh, would say, you know, that's not right. But, um, but I got to say, I saw, a lot of, I saw a lot of opportunities for our secondary to come up and, and smack somebody and put them on the ground, and they didn't do it. He needs to get better at that. And I think he can. He's a good athlete. And he's shown on occasion he'll come up and hit somebody. But if you're going to play back there, you cannot afford to miss tackles. So I want to see him really improve in that area. And if he does... He has a chance to go down as one of the as one of the great USC safeties, uh, and that's saying something at this program. If he doesn't if he doesn't become a consistent tackler, then he's not going to come close to that. Because I don't care if it's Mark Carrier or Ronnie Lott or or Troy Polamalu or Tim McDonald, there are a whole lot of great safeties that have played at USC, and every single one of them, they would put a guy on his back. Caleb Bullock needs to start putting people on their back. Well, I think I, I all these players that you guys have mentioned uh, certainly are worthy of uh, following development. I can certainly see why you would put them on your list. Uh, for me, uh, I'm going to start off with uh, Mason Cobb. Um, you know, I kind of have an idea of what the returners are going to do or what they've done. I have, I don't have an idea how much they're going to develop. That will remain to be seen. Uh, and if the media doesn't get a chance to watch spring practice at length, uh, we will still be in the dark about how these guys develop. But uh, for the sake of the argument here, uh, my number one is uh, Mason Cobb. I want to see how he uh, competes for the inside linebacker 
position if he's competing. I think the wild card is Eric Gentry. I'm not so sure he shouldn't be on the outside, uh, depending on how, as Eric, I think, mentioned his height and his weight, uh, especially his weight uh, goes there. I want to see number two for me, we tack at Curtis. I think that this guy is mature beyond his years, uh, not only big, fast, strong, but very, very smart. Uh, third, I'm going to the three, four, and five are all defensive linemen. I think it all starts there. I don't think that's uh, football 101 confusion. Uh, I want to see Anthony Lucas, uh, see how he incorporates his uh, obviously great potential. Potential is sometimes referred to as unproven talent. Uh, if he can live up to it, that's going to be a big, big deal. Uh, Jack Sullivan, the transfer from Purdue, I can see him easily starting. And a lot of people I've talked to really believe he was underrated uh, at Purdue, that he really is a, a really tough player, plays every down. And, of course, uh, Kyron Bards that uh, Mark mentioned, uh, this is a guy that was doing pretty well in his progression until he got hurt. And I think uh, if you had Lucas Sullivan and Barnes as your, your down three, uh, I think that would be a pretty big improvement. Now, granted, Tui Pelotu isn't going to be here, but if uh, Lucas lives up to his potential, uh, probably could ease the pain on that one. Uh, 